um, was a partisan. He was born in 1902 in Fiesole. I don't know, I'm sure many of you know Fiesole. That's a, a town overlooking the city of Florence. He was born to a Jewish father, an Italian from Mantua named David and a black American uh, mother, um, Cynthia. And both um, his father was a mechanic and his mother both worked in this villa in Fiesole. So that's where he grew up till he was about, till his mother died in 1920. And then they moved over to, um, uh, to Florence. They came down to Florence in Bellina, Santa Croce area. And uh, that was in the 1920s. So what we're talking about, we have to, to consider the fact that uh, we, um, we had the first world war, we had the Russian revolution all in that period. And um, so, uh, the young uh, Alessandro Sinigaglia, who, as, as we can see from the, this slide that, that we're seeing, I, I hope all of you can see it now, is uh, he was, uh, as you can see, not only was he a partisan, he was, he was, Jew, he was a Jew and he was also black. So in, uh, um, in the 1920s, especially after the march of Mussolini uh, uh, in Rome in 1922, it was, and with all, the, uh, um, with all that was going on in Italy in that particular period, it was not very easy for him. In 1922, he, did the, um, he went for military service in the Navy and where he stayed for almost two years. And then he came back, he, he was a submariner. He came back to Florence where he worked as, um, to just, he, uh, as a mechanic, just like his father. And uh, just a year earlier, the Partito Comunista Italiano, the Italian Communist Party had been formed in, in Livorno. We celebrated the 100 years anniversary just a few days ago. And um, he decided to join the, the Communist Party. And in uh, this Communist Party, obviously with the advent of the fascism in 1926, it was declared illegal. So he was part of the illegal communist, uh, Partito Comunista Italiano. So um, in uh, uh, what happened, he stayed in Florence, but he was, um, because of, as I was saying, because of the oppression, because of the, uh, of, uh, excuse me if I'm being, if I'm a bit, um, I hope you understand, but <laughs> um, anyway. In nine, he, had to, he had to leave Florence in Italy. He had to leave Italy in 1928 because of, the, because of his political views and he went to France. From France, he went to, he was sent to Moscow by the, by the, by the Italian Communist Party to go to political school there where he worked as well and where he learned the language. He met uh, a Russian uh, girl, Nina, with whom he had a daughter, Margarita, and he stayed there and um, it was a problem for him there. He was there under, he was disguised under, under another name because the relations, the uh, diplomatic relations between the two countries, between the Soviet Union and Italy had been reestablished. And so he was being um, observed both by the, by the Italians in the, by the Italian embassy, by the Italians based in Moscow, and also obviously by the, uh, by the Russians, because um, they had to be certain that he was a real, you know, he was a real communist. And he was, um, he was betrayed and he had to leave in 1935, he had to leave Moscow where, and he fled to Switzerland. And while in Switzerland, he was um, just a few, a few kilometers away from the border from Italy. He was, he was captured, he was arrested, and he was expelled from Switzerland. From Switzerland, he went to France where he stayed for a couple of years. And uh, from there, uh, it was the start of the Spanish Civil War where you had all the anti-fascists, many anti-fascists who uh, wanted to go and fight for, for freedom as well, for equality, for justice, for social justice in Spain against Franco. So he left France and he went to, he went to Spain where he was enrolled in the Navy at a submarine as well. He did some very important tasks as in military wise, 
um, especially in he was sent to Barcelona where he, he was able to remove all the mines from the ports in, Bar in Barcelona. So it was like a great achievement for him in Spain as well. And then with the victory of Franco, he left, he left Spain and he went back to France. And under the, tell me, please, uh, Simon, I don't know if, you, if you're listening to me, but if I'm going too fast, please. No, uh, you, you're, you're doing great, you're doing great. Okay, thank you. You're doing fine. <laughs> and uh, from France, he was captured and he was uh, given to the Italians and the Italians uh, took him back to Italy where he was exiled on the island of Ventotene, where you had uh, the political opponents of the fascist re regime. And now we are talking about, it was 1941. So um, I'm sure most of you know as well, the manifesto of Ventotene, which is, like, which, uh, is where, uh, let's say the European Union, it's like the basis, no? The foundation of the European Union, which was written by, um, by some of the political opponents of the fascist regime, which were exiled on the island. And it was really, you did not only have political opponents on the island, you also had, for example, um, Senegalia uh, remembers meeting this, um, this lady from Salerno, who had been exiled because she had entertained um, a sexual relationship with, uh, with an interracial relationship with someone else. So it was an island where, um, as I was saying, you had about 650 political opponents of the regime who were uh, exiled there, but you also had other people who were pushed away from society. And in, uh, he stayed there till uh, when Mussolini fell in 1943 and up to the armistice in, uh, in uh, September of 1943, where he left the island and he came back to Florence. When he was here in Florence, because of all the military skills he had gained while abroad, he was able to organize um, the, the, let's say, the, the partisans, obviously, the rebels who had armed skills into the GAP, IGAP, uh, which were the, uh, the, the skilled forces, armed forces who were fighting, who were fighting against the, the Nazi fascists in, in, the, in, in the country, in the territory. So um, Senegalia, as I was saying, he found that the GAP, which were fundamental for the liberation of not only obviously of Florence, of Tuscany, but uh, of Italy on the whole. And he was, um, he, uh, he continued with uh, um, him and the rest of the people forming the gaps would, for example, um, uh, set, um, de destroy railroads, and also do uh, some uh, um, some uh, even 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 just symbolic um, not only murders but also symbolic acts to show the people of Florence. I'm talk not only in Florence, obviously, but to pe the people of Tuscany and Italy as well that the fascists were not um, did not have total control of the territory. So he was really um, he was well known. Obviously, he could be. He was easily recognizable as well because, as we, he was, we were saying, we're talking about uh, someone who was um, physically, let's say, uh, 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 different compared to the other to, to the other members of the partisan groups of the Gapists. And um, in 1944, which was only a year after he had come back, it was in February, 13th of February, 1944, of 77 years ago. He was in Via Pandolfini, he was having lunch in a trattoria and where he was, um, he was recognized and he was, uh, um, there was a group of the Banda Carita. I, if many of you know Italian, Carita normally means compassion and uh, uh, charity, but um, the Banda Carita uh, uh, took the name from uh, uh, a very violent, from Mario Carita, a very violent uh, uh, fascist group which, okay, now on the slide, you can see the, the arrow is right on him on, um, that's the group, de la Banda Senegalia, you have Ponente, you have other members of the, of the GAPs, the Gapists. And as I was saying, he was uh, caught, at, he was caught just outside when he was leaving the Trattoria, he tried to escape, but he was shot five times in the back by the fascists. And um, obviously, the place where he, where he lost his life, we now have a plaque 
in Via Pandolfini saying, uh, this is when uh, Alessandro Sinegalia uh, uh, was, was, was killed. He was, he was given the silver uh, medal of honor. And uh, later on the 22nd Brigata Brigade, the Garibaldi Brigade, that's the, that's the plaque. The Garibaldi Brigade was named after him. So it was the um, Brigata Alessandro Sinigaglia. He was also known as Vittorio. And it was the first uh, brigade who entered Florence to free Florence in August of the same year of 1944 from Porta Romana. We have some pictures, I'm sorry. I don't know if we'll be able to see them, but... Um, and so, uh, okay, this is, I'm sorry if I, I went, maybe I went a bit too fast with the talking about Alessandro Sinigaglia, but I think that the most important thing is that most people here in Florence uh, know the importance of the Brigata Sinigaglia. We've been celebrating and commem commemorating the Sinigaglia Brigade for years, but not many people know that he was, uh, not many people know who he was they don't know uh, uh, where, uh, what his life, what his biography was, and especially they don't even know that he was, he was black. And I think in the contemporary Florence, it's very important to uh, learn the history of the people who made Florence to be what it is, or what it was in, in uh, straight after the war, as in uh, it was uh, uh, Medaglia d'Oro alla Resistenza, the whole city, no? a golden medal for resistance. Because as I was saying, they um, were free in 1944, almost a year before the end of the war. And um, uh, lately, uh, I think it's, the time has come, well, obviously uh, even before, but I mean, now in, 19, in, uh, in 2020, Especially, especially with what happened uh, right after the incident, let's say the Black Lives Matter movement, which uh, in, uh, af after George Floyd's death, and where globally, just about everywhere from Sierra Leone to uh, France to, to Italy, where people have been uh, are conscious of what's uh, uh, structural, let's say, uh, discrimination. And uh, where we're not only asking to defund the police, as people may think, but we're, we're trying to um, let people be aware of who in the past and in the present and in contemporary time of uh, the, the presence of, um, of black, of Afro-descendants. Um, now, we're we're, now we're in Florence, obviously. So we're talking about what they represent here in Italy. As I was saying, uh, following what happened in, uh, in, uh, in, in, to George Floyd, um, we, ha we had all the movements, for example, here in Rome, uh, an important thing that took place that, had to do, that has to do with another black partisan, which is Giorgio Marincola. Maybe there's a picture of uh, Giorgio Marincola we can see as well who was, um, he was, he was born in, uh, in 1923. So he was um, 20 years older. He, that is Giorgio Marincola. He was born in 1923 in Somalia. And then he came over to, to, to Italy in the, in the South of Italy where he studied. And then following the armistice in 1943, he became a partisan as well. He was, um, I, I'll, I'll go even faster with Marincola's uh, story. He was captured and then he ecco, was... adesso c'è scritto. L'audio del microfono è stato riattivato. Oh, sorry. And then he was um, okay. In uh, as I was saying, in 1943, uh, Giorgio Marincola became. He went. He became a revolutionary. He was captured. He was asked when when he was captured. He was taken to this. Uh, it's called Radio Batia, where he had to, where most of the. Uh, the, the people who opposed fascism were, were taken to um, speak in favor of the regime, no? He was asked why he, he was fighting um, along the British. And instead of denying uh, the fact that he was a partisan, he spoke against the fascist oppression. And during the, the when, when he was on air on the radio, you could hear that he was being beaten after he had, he had made this um, statement and he was imprisoned. And then later on, he managed to, when he was free, he managed to escape. 
but he was um, he was captured in 1945 in May at a checkpoint, and he was he was killed. So um, the uh, the importance of Marine Kola, which is another partisan that most people know nothing about, uh, was uh, used in uh, in um, in August in uh, last year to rename uh, a subway station stop, which was which was meant to be renamed, which was which is Ambaradan. If if, if uh, some of you uh, speak Italian, you know that the, there's a, this expression, which is Ambaradan, which means a great confusion, but it comes from the colonial past. It comes from a, a massacre where about 20,000 people in Africa were killed. Okay, that's a battle of Ambaradan, just north of, of Addis Abeba. It has come to be, to be it's become part of the Italian language without people knowing exactly why we say Ambaradan. It's because you had troops, you had Italian troops. It was a great confusion. You had people, uh, um, uh, were being, they were bombed with, uh, even with unconventional bombs, with, um, how, how do you, okay, uh, I don't really, um, I've forgotten the name of the, of the, of the particular uh, gas that was was used to kill women, uh, men, and uh, young kids. As I was saying, they say almost twenty thousand people were killed during this battle. In this great confusion, because the battle lasted for days, with the Italian troops, which were which invaded uh, 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 the country, um, this expression is being used by everyone without giving it the real meaning. You know. So the importance of changing the name from Ambaradan to Giorgio Marincola is the same importance we're trying to give here in Florence uh, uh, to the figure, to, the, to, the, to Alessandro Sinigalia. And um, as in the City Council of Florence, we, we, we passed the motion already to rename, to name a street after Alessandro Sinigalia. Because um, in, uh, in the past years, and especially now, even uh, uh, just, uh, under the, just about a week or 10 days ago, on the 10th of February, actually, uh, where they celebrate the day, Il Giorno del Ricordo, which is a way we think is to try to, um, Try to rewrite history, you know. Try to say that the Giorno della Memoria, which is just two weeks earlier, on the 25th of January, the uh, Giorno della Memoria, which is the day, the day of the memory, uh, where, where we, um, we we pay homage to the millions of people that were killed in the Second World War, and where we're trying to. Um, we're trying to keep the memory alive because obviously we're talking about 70 years ago, 80 years ago, actually, where most of the people who took part in the, in the, in the fight, most of the people who witnessed it um, physically are um, slowly, obviously, because of old age, we're, we're slowly losing the memory. And so we think, that a partisan which is tied to such an important um, fact that happened during the Second World War, which is uh, here in Florence, here in Italy, we think it should be, um, it sh it's necessary for, the, for Italians, not only for Italians, but for people in Florence, mainly for, for the Florentines to know who we're talking about when we're talking about the great Alessandro Sinigaglia. Um, Simon, uh, I don't know if you can, uh, 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 if you want to <laughs> say something, but as you, as yeah, you. Um, I, what, what I want to say is, is thank you very much, Antonella, for um, very courageously um, telling us the story. I know because we were speaking off, off air um, that the um, invasion we suffered at the beginning was um, very um, unsettling and, um, and difficult for you. So uh, respect for your courage in, in uh, continuing with the talk, which was fascinating and certainly told me many things 
uh, that I didn't know. I'm afraid we can't do a conventional qu question and answer. Um, I don't think we want to take that risk tonight because um, I, I recognize many of the names, but I don't know exactly who's, who's out there on Zoom, but I don't want to open it up to discussions. Um, I, I, I will um, say, uh, I'll ask you, um, Antonella, if you could tell us a little bit more about the work of Black History Month uh, and ways in which people um, might be able to get in, involved if they wanted to. Yes, yes, uh, and um, I'll, I'll be very happy to talk about Black History Month because, as you may know, but I'd like to, uh, if it's possible, if we can ask, I don't know if Justin can say something, Justin Randolph Thompson, because he's the co founder mm -hmm. of Black History Month, and I'm supposed, and I suppose he'll be. Uh, no, I'm trying to find him. No, you there, Justin. Okay, right. it's the sixth edition, by the way, it's the sixth edition of Black History Month here in Florence. I. I have uh, I have contributed as a spectator more than I, I, I have not actually been involved in organizing Black mm -hmm. History Month Florence. But I think, as we were saying um, uh, just on Monday on the radio, that it's really important for people to know uh, what's going on. Not only not only in February, because normally Black History Month, as you all know, is being celebrated in um, as in the United States, in Canada, and in England just for a month. Uh, echo, echo Justin, maybe Justin, maybe Justin can... Uh, I, I, I think, um, you, are you, 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 you go. Justin, say, say something. Sure, you can hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Good. Okay, yeah, thank you so much for all, uh, all of you uh, following this, you, Antonella, for this uh, incredible intervention, which um, I think that every year that passes in the context of Florence, um, the, the, the election on this figure of Senegalia, um, I think has become a little bit more present, but it's still uh, sadly a very underknown, underexplored and under-celebrated figure of Florentine history. Uh, so I'm really appreciative about the mo any effect that we have, any moment where we can share that with people. And I wanted to just make a quick note that um, every year on the anniversary um, of his death, there are gathering at the um, plaque in Via Pandolfini, where songs dedicated to Senegal are sung, and it tends to be an event, it's organized on Pio Tragno, um, that has a good presence, but I think that we need more people out there, because um, I think that that physical presence there is something that allows us to understand the importance of this figure and why we need to, to celebrate it. Um, the context of Black Month Florence um, this year is uh, organized under the theme Ostinato, um, and it's, it's really about the sort of persistence that is needed to really um, confront these conversations in a context uh, like Florence, where um, unfortunately, um, despite a very long and rich history in dialogue with the content, content, content of Africa, um, it's, it's very, um, it's assumed to be something a bit of a, a misclaimer, like it doesn't fit with this context of Florence. And that I think that history has shown us that it's actually something that's peppered throughout every moment, the city of Florence's history. Um, black presence has been in the city. And so uh, we put together um, for the past, um, since 2016, uh, a program that you consists of around 50 events um, that involve many, many different institutions come together in a network towards a common goal of sharing and celebrating um, the diversity that exists amongst Afro-descended people in the context of Italy, and trying to excavate, um, I say, recovering Black history in this context at the same time, sort of trying to recover from all of the work that has been done to sort of evacuate this history from the narrative of, of the city itself and its contemporary uh, existence. Um, you can see on our website, blackhistorymonthflorence.com, um, under 2021, there's our full program. I think we still have about um, 20 events still left in there. And um, there's plenty of conversations we have recorded in various ways. And so there's ways to go back and revisit those. Many of those are English for those who don't speak Italian. Um, and um, there's lots of opportunities to sort of see some of the things that we've done in, in the past as well as a record of the conversations that are possible in this city and hopefully as an invitation. Um, so Postinto is also sort of an invitation to everyone to sort of join us in this conversation, in this dialogue, join us in the institutions in which we work or that we visit, fostering 
space for this kind of dialogue that is actually very central to Florence. Thank you, Justin. Um, I, I'm going to relax the rules a little bit. I can see familiar faces. So if, if you want to intervene, first of all, show your face and put your hand up. And if I know who you are enough or can trust you, I'll, uh, I'll invite you to speak. So um, is anybody, I, I can see some, some uh, familiar faces there. Did, did, do anybody you want to say anything? Uh, or somebody else wants to come in by, by showing us your face and putting your hand up? The compulsion. I think we're all a bit shook up. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Anyhow. All right. I, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do, there's nobody else wants to come in. I'm going to do um, one last thing before we wrap up. Um, as you know, regulars to the, the Wednesday lectures, I, around about now, I make my regular weekly plea to uh, ask people if they would like to make little donations to help the Institute along. Um, I'm going to ask you uh, again, if you would like to donate in any amount you can to the British Institute's Just Giving uh, pages, please do so. But everything that is, uh, that is donated this week, we will pass on to Black History Month. Um, so um, please make your donations and we will pass it all on to Black History Month to, um, as a small gesture of solidarity. Um, uh, on which note, I will, uh, I think, thank you all for returning um, and for standing with us through a difficult evening. Huge thanks to Antonella for your courage and for sticking with us, even though it was horrible at the beginning. Big thanks also to Justin for helping Sarah at the back end to um, re-establish it so it could be safe um, and we could keep the trolls out. Um, and um, we learn and we move forward. Um, and I just say, power. All luck to you, everybody. And thank you very much indeed. Grazie. All right. Good night, everybody. So. Grazie. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And um, we'll, we'll wrap it up there, but please do make us the, the, the donation so we can help Black History Month out. All right. Good night, all, and we'll see you all next week with Jeremy Boudreau back to the safe area of sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>